Starting a few minutes late, but uh, let's start the workshop for Thursday, February 11, 2021. We have uh, four agenda items tonight. Let's start right out with our 5.30 uh, discussion on utility pricing. Fixed versus variable pricing with, am I pronouncing this correct, Entheos? Good, that's perfect. Thank you. Entheos Energy. Dave's, take it away. Well, good evening, board. Uh, thank you again for inviting us in. Uh, I just wanted to start off with saying that the recovery slash audit that I was here last time and spoke to you folks about uh, is in processing. So that's the good news. Uh, Lily's team at TRI has been in contact with Paul a few times on a couple of different things, and um, it's, it's going forward. So hopefully, like I mentioned last time, one or two things will happen. Either we'll get you some money back that you erroneously paid, or it'll come back with nothing, and that means you guys have been paying your bills perfectly on time and without any erroneous activities going on. Uh, I'm here today with my, uh, I'm going to call him I'm at my friend and boss, I guess I could call him somewhat of my boss, uh, partner. Um, we're representing today on Theos Energy. Uh, we're a, a utility brokerage uh, for large commercial industrial brokering. Dave Pagoda here is the owner, um, a longtime friend uh, for, gosh, 40 years now. and. Um, I'm going to pass the mic over to Dave because he is the expert on all this. And what we want to do, obviously, is help save the town <coughs> some money going forward with uh, a volatile market in the utility industry. So I'm going to pass it over to Dave. Thanks, Thanks Dave. Hello, town board. Uh, we met uh, a couple weeks ago with Mr. Flaherty um, and Paul and walked over, kind of went through the history of what was going on with how the town of Webster was purchasing electricity and natural gas. Uh, <clears throat> I, my name again, Dave Pagoda. I own a company in Theos Energy. We, all we do is we broker electric and natural gas supply. So for those that aren't familiar, somewhat familiar I would imagine, um, you have a choice in who you can buy your supply from. Uh, in this town, rg &E delivers it. You don't have a choice. Whatever the state says they can charge you for the delivery, that's what they charge you. Uh, on the supply side, there's about 300 plus companies who can sell you electric and natural gas supply. Okay, you say, wow, that's a lot of companies. It certainly is. They, and they come in all different sh shapes and sizes. So for the past almost 10 years, uh, we, for our clients, we gather their information we put together all their usage and we put it out to bid. And we send it out, out of those 300 companies, we put out about 25 of them we include in the bid. The reason why we include 25, those 25, um, they don't have bait and switch pricing. We've gone through all their contracts. These are financially stable companies. Um, they, they passed the, the litmus test for us um, and they, they weren't to get pricing from. So. That's what we do. So we take it. We don't work for any one of those particular energy companies. Um, on any given day, any one of them could have the best possible price. Okay. I'll take a step back. There's two ways that you can purchase from those companies on the supply side. One is variable. It fluctuates every month. Um, our g and &E sells a variable product, um, as do all utility companies. The, the difference between a variable and a fixed rate, uh, there's about 23 different components. I'll talk about electric quickly, and I'll get to the point here. Uh, sorry, I'm long-winded. But there's about uh, 23 components that make up your supply cost for electric. Um, one of those is the actual electricity that was generated. Um, the other components, it's extremely difficult to track. There's line loss, there's, I could go over all 23 and we'd all sit there going, what are you talking about? Um, there are things that are tough to track. The, when we put a uh, client's bid, put it out to the, to the suppliers, when we ask for a full fixed price, and what that means is they'll guarantee, they actually go out and buy a block of energy for the next 12, 24, 36, 60 month period and they actually purchase that up front based on today's market pricing. Um, they know they're competing in a bid so any of the fat that's in there it really gets whittled down. They have to make a decision on all those components on what they're going to purchase it for. They buy a future and they lock in that price. Uh, the other way to do it is to 
buy on the market. It changes every month. It's extremely volatile. Um, you guys had been purchasing for the past, uh, looks like since 2013, with Fluent Energy. Um, you were on a variable product. Um, some years you did good, some years you didn't do so good. Uh, we happen to be going through right now with a change in administration and all the talk about uh, Green Energy Act and everything that's going on. There's, uh, let's put it this way, the likelihood of pricing going down from where it's currently at, we're about a 20 year historic low right now with electric and natural gas supply. Um, they really can't pull gas out of the ground any cheaper than they're doing it right now. So it's, it's not going any lower. Uh, when you start talking about green energy and uh, you know, elimination of fossil fuels, which are used to generate electricity in the majority of the country right now, we're going to see, again, I don't have a crystal ball, but I can tell you what the suppliers think when they go out and purchase it. Um, that pricing is right now is still available at a, at a near market low, okay? Um, and that's what we put together and we showed you. We pulled down, I've got the top three here, and it shows you what's available on a fixed term, on a 12, 24, 36, up to 60 month pricing. And you could say, man, last year, if you look at last year's pricing, it was extremely low based on the last administration and everything they did to deregulate the industry, the energy industry. Uh, you know, the average rate last year per kilowatt hour, you guys were at almost 2.4 2 cents. Looking at Paul's numbers, he pulled them off. Um, and that's your average rate. And that's low, that's really low. You say, why would I want to go in and, and leave and entertain locking in something that it's at you know, 4 cents or 4.2 cents? Um, if, if you look back at your his history and prior administrations, you know, you were up at, you know, five and a half cents, 5.2 cents, 6.2 cents in uh, 2016. Um, so it's, it's really, we deal with several hundred clients around Monroe County, Ontario County. Uh, out of all those clients, we don't have one who purchases on a market-based pricing. A couple of them will buy 50% of it variable and 50% they'll lock in. But if you go to any of the big, big companies in town, the Wegmans of the world, who, you know, one of their stores does three times as much as you guys do in a year with all 64 of your facilities, um, they don't buy on a, on a variable rate. Uh, Constellation brands, uh, you pick any large account. Most cities and towns, uh, we deal with City of Geneva, uh, Ontario, uh, they have locked into full fixed pricing. And the reason is, uh, again, it, it comes down to volatility. If you guys can stomach, if this year the rates double and you've budgeted for a two and a half cent rate, because that's what it was last year for supply, uh, it could easily come back at, you know, five cents this year and sit there going, wow, what, where'd this extra, you know, come from? And, that, and it's basically, it's the market. So, we, we do, can provide a supply that's on a variable rate. All these suppliers offer it. Um, I have no problem doing it. And by switching from Fluent, we could actually take you guys back where you have control. Right now, you, you don't even have access. We had to get copies of your bills um, uh, that were, it took us almost over a month to get them. We couldn't get it from RG&E because you guys had been purchasing through Adam Bellows in Monroe County. Uh, for seven years, the contract had actually expired a couple of years ago. Nobody renewed it there. No one was cared about the town of Webster. Uh, you know, you know what I mean. So it's it's one of those things. The bills come and you pay them. It's it's my electric bill. It's my gas bill. I have to. So, just wanted to uh, again. What we do is we put it out to bid. We present the numbers, and I'd be more than happy to answer any questions. It, uh, just to explain, yeah. Uh, through our gas Monroe County contract for at least seven years or so and uh, it's called fluent energy but it's a Monroe County contract and there are many uh, local governments that are part of that consortium so I, I 
did contact Fluent Energy and ask them if they were looking to lock in at a fixed price, and they said no, they were going to stay with the variable price. That's just the way their contract works. So uh, there seems to be a lot of risk that the prices are going to rise for sure because we're well, at, definitely going to go we're at all time lows right now. So, but one more thing on that on the variable versus fi full fixed rate. The supply companies, all these companies would much rather sell you a variable rate because, you know, one month it's two and a half cents, next month it's four and a half cents. And there's no right, I mean, you can track the energy cost, but the other components you can't. So the profit they make off of a uh, variable rate is greater than a fixed rate because they have to actually go out and purchase that block on that day for the next period of time, whatever you lock in for. So, um, just a side note. I, because I was in this meeting and I, I can't, I can't go, it was two weeks ago? Mm, and three or four. Three weeks ago, yeah. three. Was it three weeks ago? And I think what we put into the town board's packets, unfortunately you guys got my chicken scratch notes, uh, but what was, Interesting then was that based on the, the town's usage of uh, whatever, 3,886,000, is that ohms, kilowatts, whatever? Kilowatt, kilowatts. Thank you, dude. Very good. Uh, <laughs> if we were in a variable last year when the prices were low and if we were paying three cents, it cost the town 116 grand. Where if we got into this fixed cost, then um, comparatively, it would have cost 166000 We would be getting into something that would have cost $50,000 more. And the community would be calling for our heads for that fiscal move. Now, when the rates, if they go up to $0.06, cents, and we locked in at four, uh, then we just saved the town sixty or eighty thousand dollars that year. That's the um, that's the game we're in right here, and it's not an easy one to you know. I, I I happen to to think that what they have said to us is probably true. John, you said rates are going to go up. I agree. Um, you know, who knows. But um, right now, and Paul, correct me, and I just, I'm just trying to make sure we're comparing apples to apples. Uh, in, in, in a way, you can't because variable versus fix is different. But the rate that we're paying currently on the variable with the county plan is under three cents. Yeah, for electric, electric uh, it averaged 0 0.024 for uh, 2020. 2.4 cents. Yeah. Okay. Um, but seven years ago, it was 0 0.0542. What was that, Paul? 0 0.0452? 0 0.0542. It was 5.4 cents. All right. So it's gone down three cents in seven years. And I was, you know, just calling space spade here. Uh, locking into the fixed at today's price and you brought the new one and handed it out because like you said you the bid price is different from three weeks ago to today it's bid, bid price daily. changes daily for instance we'll... and i don't want to get too granular go ahead when they came three weeks ago i was kind of surprised that the 12 month fixed was lower rate on on watts than the 24 month i thought that uh, maybe if you if you locked in for a longer period of time they might give you a, a better deal you said well sometimes they do sometimes they don't well now you hand us this and it looks like 12 24 and 60 it's more commensurate with what i would have thought the fixed rate goes down from 12 to 24 and continues to go down to 60. um which makes sense to me um you know just in the in the economics of things but it does not, I mean, just so the board understands that that's a gamble. It's a gamble. You know, because at 2.4 at, at 2 cents right now, 
um, locking in for a year or six or five years at 4.2 cents, uh, based on our uh, $3.8 million of, of usage, I mean, you're talking about going from 110000 in electric costs for the town up to 170000 And we look like boobs. Can I say that? Yeah, I can say that, right? Where, like I said, in a couple of years, if, if what we think is the trend, and all of a sudden that megawatt is, is variable at seven cents, well, we look like we're heroes. Because certainly, comparatively, the town is locked in at four cents and, uh, you know, uh, saved the town in future years. Uh, the 3% delta on that's 100 grand a year on that wattage usage. So I hope I didn't just confuse the issue. No. Tom, I mean, can I? Show what it is. It's a gamble. Can I add a couple things? Um, when, when Paul gave us the historical usage since you've been with Fluent, we averaged out those years, and the average of those years obviously accumulated, came out to the same pricing that we're offering today over the course of the, the, those years you've been on that variable rate with Fluent. Okay, that's going back, obviously, when the rates were high, then through, again, like David mentioned, the last administration, it went low again because of regulations and whatnot, and then now we're at a, a stake in the road or a fork in the road where we're not sure what's going to happen, but odds are it's going to go up. A couple of things that we do is unlike Fluent did, we work for you guys. We're going to, whatever, whatever term you decide to go with, we're looking at pricing months in advance to be able to get you, you folks into a best rate possible going forward. We don't work for the utility company and or the, the ESCOs, energy supply company. We work for you guys. Okay, and what, what that's going to give you is a couple of things. A peace of mind, obviously, knowing that you're not going to pay more than, you know, four Point two cents a kilowatt for the next 12, 24, or, or 60 well, months. Well, it helps in budgeting. There's no question and, about and that. And that was, by, that was, gonna, be, that was gonna be B, yeah. was that now you folks can budget your yeah. budget uh, yeah. on your utilities, knowing that that's gonna stay there for the term that you get into. And again, right. we work for you folks. We look ahead, of, you know, months ahead before that term is up and say, okay, listen, town, uh, here's what we can get you future locked into at this rate once this contract is up going forward. And uh, obviously, we're going to do, we want a long term agreement with you folks, because we're going to do what's best for you guys, which in turn is best for us. Guys, what we unless, because right we we're think? falling a little bit behind so, uh, on the schedule here, so <laughs> I, I zero, we're going to tie this up, but I, I can assure you that, you know, with Paul and the board, we, we you know, I, We'll have to figure something out, um, and uh, I, when I Why say you, figure something out, we're either, sure. So we're, we're paying 2.4 cents per kilowatt hour right now, right? Uh, that's what you paid on average last year. Right? Right. Average for 2020. So, and in, in I'm looking at, the, depending on our terms, you're going point 4.25 cents, 4.219 at 24, 4.21 for 60 months, right? Yeah. So how did you come up with those numbers? I don't come up with them. We put it out to bid. And that's we, what the bids came back Those at. are the responses from, okay. the, from the suppliers. Yeah. All right. So we, we, again, we put out a bid, sent out to 25 people. These are the top three. Yeah. Wow. So look, if we're ever going to do something, looking, I will tell you this. They're it, looking it, at the tea leaves, too. It, it, it makes no sense to do it for one year. Why would you do it for one year and... You know, if you're going to take the gamble, you'd go out to five years. Mm -hmm. Right. Because there's no benefit doing it one year because we're already, right. unless the, the, the prices just skyrocket over a three-month period, why would you lock into $50,000 more in cost? I, I think the prices would go up gradually, I would think. Yeah. So that's right. something we'll have to consider, too. So, but, yeah, there's um, a lot of factors that can, yeah. that can drive that. So, Guys, thank you. Say that again. The thing that I think maybe Paul could look into is what Fluent is charging you folks on that variable rate currently. Yeah, you know, that's a good point. 20, because you, know, you just did a twenty twenty one. Here, maybe the delta is not one point eight cents from two point four to four point two. Maybe the delta is we're paying three cents right now. Exactly. Um, you know. 
Thanks, guys. Thank All right. Thank Interesting. Thank you. Um, Dave and Dave. I think it's 5.53. I bet you we, we can catch up a little bit on this uh, agenda <laughs> because, well, first of all, I have to say that for anybody watching at home and for the people in attendance, um, I apologize. A lot of uh, insights at the meeting is lost when uh, Deputy Supervisor Patty Cataldi is not here. You're stuck with us four guys. <laughs> Wow. Anyway, hopefully maybe we'll get somebody who gives some insights like Patty usually gives. But look, uh, was it one month ago we first broached at, uh, at the workshop the concept of the extension of the supervisor's term from two years to four years, and then concept two, the term limit of a super, the supervisor Correct. at three terms or 12 years. And Attorney Genesi will probably be the star of the show here because a month ago he dropped a couple of revelations, at least on me, is that the two different ways you can go about this, one is low. Well, I, I'll explain yes. it. Yes. Uh, uh, there's, there's, there are two different ways. One of them is the town board can pass a resolution placing on the ballot uh, this November a referendum to town residents to extend the supervisor's term to four years. That has to be done 150 days prior to the election or earlier. So I, I believe whenever the election is in November, so it would be sometime in May, maybe the first meeting in May before that. The other means of, of seeking a change in the term of the supervisor is by home rule message, which is something I think you're all familiar with, where the town board would effectively pass a resolution uh, asking the state legislature to pass the law. Uh, that could also would also go to uh, referendum. However, uh, that could that could be done on much less notice. Number one, number two, that could be in effect. I, I guess I skipped one thing. That could be in effect this coming election. If it's done by resolution, 150 days out, it would not take effect until the, the following election. So therefore, if it was done this year by resolution, placed on the ballot, and if it passed, it would not be effective until 2023. Right. If it's done by home rule um, uh, legislation, the state legislature permits it, it goes on the ballot this year, we don't have to have, there's, there's much less notice, which I won't get into right now, but it's, mm -hmm. it's not 150 days out. It would go on the ballot as a referendum, and it would take effect if we wanted to this year. Therefore, the supervisor, if it passed, yeah. right, correct. And uh, now, that, I won't get into the term limits right yet. Right. Let's let's break it that one because concept okay. two is the term limit. So let's start with that one. And I, sure. I, I can tell you, you know, write it down, cut my finger in blood, have me sign it. I have no interest in this board and maybe the other four feel differently about this of getting a referendum on the November 21 ballot that whoever wins the election for supervisor would start January 1st 2022 a four-year term I, I have no appetite for that I do have an appetite for on the November 23 election that winner of the supervisor election would start on January 1st, 2024 as a four-year term. Okay. The referendum for that, I would like, to, I would love to see it on the November 21 ballot. And if the town people voted in, it would not go into effect until the November of 23 election for the January 24 term. Start. That's correct. Is that correct? That's Charlie? correct. Right. right. And, and, and the other one could. The other I rest one, my case. Yeah, the other the other one, the home rule uh, could also be done any time. You could have a special election. I mean that that's right. that's not bound to the November election. The resolution passed 150 days or more prior to the election is yeah. Yeah. Uh, is uh, is only for the general. And election. Charlie, I got to tell you something. Apparently, when we talked about this uh, on January 14th. People do watch our workshops because I've seen some comments and some whatever, and I've kind of found them kind of comical that 
They said, you know, the town board's talking about this, and um, this is the problem with COVID. We got it, the public's not able to come in and talk about this with them. You know, the public should have a say on whether we're going to have the term extended from two to four years. Did anybody really listen? They would have a say. They would vote they in November, would, right? There, there would be a direct vote. You're right. So it's about well, you can't get more of a say than that. have any more input. When you're, when you're po when, last time we spoke, when you're posing this to, to the public's uh, credit, um, it, 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 it is confusing. Okay. You're talking about, you know, a referendum that's going to start one year and another year. Um, so I'm glad we're talking about this again tonight to add some clarity to it. Um, I'm definitely a proponent of allowing the citizens of, of, of Webster to, to vote on this. Um, that way uh, their voices can be heard individually. Um, I have no problem with going from two years to four years. Never have. I thought it, there's a number of municipalities um, in New York State that have done that. Mm -hmm. But I think in all fairness, it, it, it should be put out to the residents to vote on it. Well, let's be clear on this. Either way, it goes to a vote. Correct. Yes. Right. Either way. <clears throat> the only difference being is <clears throat> one is a referendum that if it passes, right. it takes immediate yeah. just, I don't know what word am I looking for, effect. It takes yes. immediate right. effect as yeah. of the first It of takes effect year. as of the election. That, Correct. Right. As, of the, right. other as opposed one, to the future in election. 2024. The other one, it puts it off for two years. And I think yes. that's So what that, that's what that does, by putting it off <laughs> right. for two years, it takes away any of the inference of that there's anyone on this board right. that is looking to further their election status mm -hmm. right. by doing so. Um, but either way, the, our residents are going to make right. that decision. It's going to be voted on either way. So there's, a, there's you know, whatever we decide we want to do, um, the, the, the residents are going to have the ultimate say. Right. Yes. I think the right thing to do is to put it out to 2024, in my opinion. Voted on in November of 2021. Correct. Right. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts, Bill? I have no thought one way or the other. It doesn't matter to me. I think a two-year term, the way it is, is fine. Every two years, the public votes. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't see a need to have to have a four-year term. But if it's so desired by the board to put it out there... I'm fine with that. Well, the beauty of this is that if you, the board puts it out there and the citizens come back and 90% shut it down, then, Bill, you, your, your thoughts were representative of the citizens. Yeah, you I, are a man of the people. I don't see either way, which, which way it matters. We've yeah. talked about this for in private, and I, I don't believe we've ever talked about it in public, but I think there's been private conversations amongst board members over the years where we talked about the fact that um, a two-year term for a supervisor, especially a new supervisor, really doesn't give him a chance or her a chance to really get into the job. Two years, because you're, you're one year learning and the next year you're almost within six months of that you're campaigning. Right. So would there be a benefit to the position to have it a four-year term. I believe it would be a benefit to have the position a four-year term. But that's not for me to decide. That's for the residents to decide. Yes. Right. So, yeah. you know, we, can pre we could present it um, as a referendum uh, at the next election, uh, just as a matter of fact. Is it what the, is it what the residents think is the correct way to operate or not. Um, oh, I agree. And, and I will say, you know, I said we'd catch up on time. I think we still will. On concept two, because we're not making any decisions tonight. I'm glad we're having another discussion on it because sooner or later we'll have to decide in May or whatever the thing that you said, Charlie. Um, but it's only February. On the term limits, I yes. took the opportunity uh, when I got here today to go along the back wall with all the nice pictures of all the supervisors that have uh, held the position over this <laughs> since Webster was formed. And I decided to only go back to 1936, which is 85 years ago, by the way. Do you know that we've had 11 supervisors in the last 85 years? 11. Their average terms were 7.27 years. Robert Whitner, 10 years. 
Oh, shoot. Sidney Barnum. Eight years. I'm sorry for their relatives. These are back in the 40s. Uh, Harold Barnum, 10 Garnum. years. Now that we get modern. Walter Bradley, who the sewage treatment plant is named after? Yep. Mm -hmm. Eight years. Ed Seitz, six years. William Lochner, two years. Irving Kent, six years. Adrian Stanton, six years. Henry Kuyaba, Kuyaba, two years. Catherine Thomas, 12 years. Ronald Nesbitt, 14 years. The, the 12 years that I said might make sense if it's a four-year term and three terms out, certainly over the last 85 years wouldn't have been problematic. And I've heard some people say that we don't need a term limit because you'll get voted out when it's time to go. Mm -hmm. So I'm, after looking at the last 85 years of history, I'm less adamant, if you want to call it, about getting a referendum for term limit as I am about the first concept, which is extending it from two to four. And I am biased on this because having sat in this seat for the last 13 months, and I'm ready to go back out and campaign. But man, you know, Art's here, Joe's here. I mean, you're busy in this job. To do it the right way, you are busy. And uh, to have to go out and collect money in campaigns from the citizens every two years, actually it's kind of insulting, in my opinion, to have to do that to citizens every two years. It makes more sense to me over four years. Um, but like I said, that's my opinion. Bill gave his opinion. The citizens would ultimately vote on it. And what do the citizens say? 15,000 come out to vote in a non-presidential year. And I don't know, how does it work on a referendum? Do you got to win by 5% on a yes versus no? Uh, or is it just no, it's a referendum. No, it's vote for vote? Simple vote. Simple vote. Simple no, no vote. percentage. Yep. Majority. Just, just okay. Like majority, right. But... Uh, that's all I got to say about the term limit. Well, the term, Mr. Supervisor, the term limit is not referendum. That's something a town board can do by itself. <laughs> just, just to clarify that. Great. <laughs> uh, well, I don't, I don't personally see any reason for a term limit. I'm not seeing it where it was a problem. The 85 years I just gave showed that it wasn't. I don't think it's really even necessary. Term limits are decided at the polls. I agree. But anyway. Well, then well, move on. We've had our <laughs> second conversation. We caught up a few minutes. It's 6.06. And the s wait a minute. Did I blow right by your sewer pan presentation? Yeah, or yeah, you did. No. 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 Oh, I'm looking at 6 o'clock. You know what? Because I'm looking at the January 14th. I had my notes from when we did the first referendum talk. Sorry. Let me close that file. Art, you are up. Fantastic. So I am here to discuss the uh, sewer department to release the RFQ for engineering services at the Vosburgh pump station for mechanical work. So in your packet, uh, you should have some pictures. Hopefully they're in the same order uh, to follow along, uh, but if not, there's not too many. Uh, so it's a little background of Osberg Pump Station down on Osberg Road. It is the town's largest uh, pump station by far. Um, it is all of 40 years old. Uh, talking to Barry, the uh, electronics were updated at Around 15 years ago. Around 15 years ago. Uh, and we're starting to see some mechanical issues at the pump station. So we start with uh, the photo numbered one, two, and three. Those are our largest pumps. They are in the ground floor, which is about 20 feet below grade. Uh, pump one has been, even in my short tenure, we've rebuilt this pump in-house. Uh, pump two is brand new in the last three years, and pump three is uh, aged. Uh, is pump three is what? It's, it's definitely aged. It, aged. It's an older pump. <clears throat> uh, the reason we're here is uh, the isolation valves for these pumps 
are failing and have failed. Uh, not all of them, some of them. Uh, our pump number one uh, is full of rags, uh, which is n not normally a big deal. Go ahead. What's an isolation valve? Uh, it uh, stops the flow of anything, in this case sewage, getting past a point. Okay, it's like a gate valve, sort of? It's like a gate valve. Okay. Correct. Uh, so our pump number one is full of rags, flushable wipes, and so forth. Uh, the guys went to pull that off thinking uh, the gate valve had closed. Mm -hmm. It had not. They pull the pump and they are showered in sewage. Oh. Uh, immediately slam that back on and that pump is now out of service. This station routinely runs uh, all the time on one, routinely runs on two pumps. Uh, to compound that, our pump number three, uh, we are waiting for some parts. It is still online because we have to have it online. Its efficiency is probably at 50% or less. So uh, if you go to the next picture, uh, I tried to label a few items. Uh, you've got the intake valve. Uh, on the left, you have the check valve. And on the right with that arrow, that is the main discharge pipe for this station. Uh, all the pumps pump into that, and it forces it north uh, out towards Vosburgh Road. Uh, the third picture, which shows just a pump, that is our pump number one. Uh, the valve to the lower right, the red handle valve, is the one that's failed. Uh, again, over 40 years old, none of the valves have okay, been so replaced. That valve, that valve makes it so you can work on the pump, right? Correct. Okay. Correct. Uh, the valves, two years ago, uh, we put in the budget to replace some of the valves and check valves. Uh, the check valves are obsolete. I cannot get parts for them. Uh, and the valves are obsolete. So there is no fixes or repairs for these. Along with these mechanical repairs, replacing all the valves and check valves, one of the other issues is if you look at your photo with the green pipes. These green pipes uh, enter the discharge pipe just before it leaves the building. These green pipes uh, are now, again, obsolete. They were used in the past to pump chemical into the system. Uh, the connection point between the green pipe and the discharge pipe, it's rotting. Uh, they are halfway rotted through. For the past year, uh, we have been spraying them with rust inhibitor and galvanized paint. Uh, when these rot off, there is no stopping the flow. We have no way of isolating that and stopping that flow. There is no veil between the pipe and those, between the discharge pipe and those green pipes. There is just no way of stopping it. One other area of concern, your last photo of the pipe going through the wall. Uh, That's the discharge pipe? No. Nope. No. That is a suction pipe. It's suction. So it's intake pipe. each of the it's the intake pipe, exactly. So each of the each of the pumps have an intake pipe from a huge wet well on the other side of the wall. Okay. This has been leaking, which is indicative of rot. Uh, we were lucky we were able to inject some uh, expandable epoxy into this as a band-aid stop stop the uh, leak coming in, uh, again, just a Band-Aid. So, any questions at that point? Each one of on the pumps head. has an intake? Each one of the pumps has an intake. Each like one, one of the pumps has an isolation valve. Each one of the pumps has a check valve. Each one of the pumps has a discharge isolation valve. So on one side of the, the valve, what, what, what you call isolation valve, mm -hmm. on one side of that is the pump. Correct. And on the other side is the intake, the, the flow that comes into it. Correct. And there's no way to turn that off so to replace that valve. Because the gate valve on the intake won't shut down. Won't shut. What exactly. I'm saying is the valve that needs to be replaced, how do you, how do you shut off the flow to that? Well, that's what we're going to talk about. You have about. to bypass pump it. Well, yeah. that's... that's that there's nothing mechanical there to do that? No. Okay. No. So <clears throat> that's issue number one. 
Don't forget issue number two. When these green pipes, and these are halfway, halfway rotted through, they're going to go. All right, how long ago did you put the epoxy on the intake? Uh, over the summer. Was that the first time that had been done or had been done yes. before that? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. So those are, those are the issues. Uh, supervisor was down for a tour along with Paul Adams and Patty Cataldi uh, when I took these uh, pictures. Uh, so it, there's absolutely a way to change one valve. Absolutely a way. The piece of apparatus to do it is almost $8,000. That's just for, they put a balloon it, they tap it, they put a balloon in the pipe, stop the flow. Replace the valve. Replace the valve. That's only for the intake. That's $8,000 just for that piece of equipment. Doesn't include labor, doesn't include anything else. Everything in there is the same vintage. We Except couldn't. number pump two, right? The, uh, number three. I'm sorry, number one. I thought you said number one was rebuilt. Number two. Number two no. is the one that's rebuilt. Was a newer one. No. Number two is new. Okay. Number one was rebuilt. rebuilt. But number one is what's stuffed with rags. Right. Yeah. So that's one we can't get to. So can we replace each of the intake valves? You betcha. We can do that. That doesn't help us with the issue of the leaking check valves that are obsolete and we can't get parts for. Right. We've looked for over six months for parts. Uh, we can't get them. Uh, we can then put these mechanisms in after the discharge valves. Again, you're looking at a minimum of $8,000 a pop. Is there a way to do all these valves and check valves? Yes. That doesn't do anything about these. Right. Right. So now let me ask you a question, Art. Yes, if sir. You, if you got the check valves all in and you can stop the flow, could you not then replace that section of pipe where those two pipes go in? We can't because that is, yeah, and I'm sorry I didn't take a better picture. Bill, so this is heading north Yeah. where everything goes through it. So all the pumps are stacked up behind it to the south. I understand that, but yeah. you, could, you can't stop the flow into that and bypass pump it for a day to replace that piece of pipe in there? Well, and that, that's honestly um, really what I want to talk about is bypass pumping the station, taking these out, making all repairs at one shot. I don't want to touch electronics of anything. I don't want to do anything else. The only thing I would do, again, valves, either see if we can weld these up. If we can leave the pipe in, fantastic, right? We can weld them up if they can do that. If not, put a new spool piece in. Um, I would like to uh, put a flow, a flow meter on it. The, flow, the station has no flow meter, and that will help us when we talk to the county yep. uh, and try to generate more, get some revenue back. Yes. Uh, I would also look at the station does have a bypass hydrant out towards the road, except there is no valve to isolate the station. <laughs> Jeez. Thank you. So, um, so all in all, all new mechanicals, pumps are good. If they need repair, we can do that in-house. They're good. New valves, new check valves. Do something with these pipes, the flow meter. Um, ideally, put an iso isolation valve in that station uh, for the future. I think you need that. Uh, the only wild card, and that's exactly what it is, are these intake yep. pipes going through the wall. Once they that. drain that wet right. well, then we'll truly see the condition of them. That being said, a piece of pipe isn't that expensive to unbolt the flange, hopefully slip a new one through. So, I, again, I don't see any, any reason to touch electronics. That's something we can plan for down the road. Um, I wouldn't do anything else to it. It just updates the mechanicals. Uh, one valve has failed again. They're 40 plus years old. I would hate to see just throwing, okay, go in and 
replace one veil. Right. Oh, then call them back, do another one. Mm -hmm. And this isn't something we can do in house. No. Yeah, so. I agree. So and what just, you just have is you have <clears throat> one pump that is down and can't be repaired because you, the valve that isolates it is shot. Correct. And not working. And then you have, on top of that, you have intake um, pipes. They're coming from the wet well to the pumps. Each pump has one, and those are leaking. Uh, the one has has leaked. We've stopped that as a band-aid yeah, approach. Band yep. But that needs to be repaired. And the other one is the 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 pipes that uh, charge the system with uh, disinfectant or odor. Whatever they did. Back whatever in the it was. Day. Right. Yeah. Those are all rotted out, and that section needs to be removed and and, and, and improved or eliminated. The, those need those things. Can be eliminated? Do you, do you think? Well, it, are are they in use now? No, they're not in use. They're we not would eliminate there. those pipes. We would hopefully just patch the holes. If not, put a new spool piece in there. Okay. Take that pipe, piece of pipe out and put a new spool piece in. So it's pretty. It's not simple, but I mean, it's pretty understandable all the needs. My question is, how do you bypass that station? The, you know, so <laughs> so with and, a big and pump. I with big pump. And big this pipe. is where <laughs> no, not a no? big pipe, but just a big pump. A big just pump. A big pump. And, and this is where you know I, I've been I've been going around round and round about this for probably the last month, and trying to think in my head: Do we need to bring engineering in this? Don't we? Can there? Can I work with uh, this contractor or that contractor and make this happen? And this needs engineering because the amount of flow. The contractors are going to need exactly you know what flow, what they need for bypass, and all that. Uh, so we need to bring in an engineer for this. For the mechanical part, for the valves, no. But to bypass the station, mm -hmm. we need an engineering. No, the you, those are force mains that go up Vosburgh Hill. Are they six inch or twelve inch? What what oh, size pipe are those? That. Well, we're coming. We're coming out at 24. Yeah, I think they're 12s. Yeah, they're 12, two 12s, right? Two 12s. I yep, think. side by side up the hill. That are force mains. Yep. Correct. Okay. Under pressure. Under pressure. And oh, so you'd need a pump. I put them in. I saw them. Did you? Yeah. Uh, so you need. Really? A, you need at that station. <coughs> Bill, when was that? I don't. Know. I lived right at the corner they were coming right through. Is it the 70s? Sometime in the 70s, I think. Really? You, where, where are you working for? I was working for um, MRB. MRB? Or Hershey? Hershey? Well, it's Hershey Malone. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So they actually, that you can actually bypass this. We can do that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'd like to see that operation. Oh, yeah. yeah. I know they've had a lot of issues when this, when this was built. Uh, they had a lot of issues. Um, with air in the lines, hammering. Um, was part of the so problem. there's air releases up halfway up that hill, which are rotted off. What? So it was designed for no, the releases off. on the pipe. Yeah, the force main pipe. I didn't yeah. hear what you said. Well, they they're rotted they off. Only for so the long. air release they're valves in the ground are rotted off. They were shot. Right? That's nice. Because I, I remember Mike and uh, Dave and that having to having to do something with this because it was driving the the residents crazy with the hammering it would be a you get a vibration in the houses from it. So just to just to clarify um, for everybody, th this this has nothing to do with the upgrades to our sewage treatment plant. This is strictly co collections, correct? That is absolutely correct. correct. Okay. Absolutely correct. It's maintenance. Yeah. It's it is maintenance. It's maintenance. Yeah, it's maintenance. That's what happens in forty years. Uh, so the request is I to allow to us this, to. Bill, you said seventies. Now you're pushing fifty years. Yeah, all right. Been fifty. Yeah. I mean, it's two thousand twenty. Trying, trying to think how long I've been out of work. Retired. See, Bill, you <laughs> yeah. should have played this when I said, "Well, where were you working?" Well, I was in second grade when I was working on this. <laughs> See, that would have been the way to do it, Bill. <laughs> so I mean, if you think about it that way, I mean, I, I you know, I had estimated at forty plus. You know, figure 45, 50 years, those veils, the town has got their money out of those veils. Oh, yeah. Without a doubt. They, they were great veils that they put in back then. Um, unfortunately, my fear is replace one, go to the next well. one. Go no. to the next so one. Go absolutely. Might as well. Go I mean, yeah. 
I, I had the advantage, so did Paul, that we were out there last Friday with Patty and toured it, and, you know. Um, but the pictures, you did a great job explaining it. Uh, and so do you want, if I understand correctly, that we do propose a resolution at next week's regular board meeting to go out to RFP uh, for engineering services? Correct. Would you, would you be writing that RFP, like the details of it? I would definitely be wrote, writing the uh, scope. Okay. I mean... And that allow us to get, you know, they're obviously the engineer's cost to, to look at this and do their work, which would then drive us into okay. what their engineer's estimate to do this work is. Okay. So you have valves there that need to be replaced, and there's really no maintenance to those valves. No. No, it's the just only a valve and that it works until it doesn't. Really is exercising them exactly just exercising. right. It works. They work until they don't anymore. Pretty much, yeah. And it's not like the guys you know it, went down there once and gave it a shot. Um, we've done everything we could, could yeah. to, and we built in with a sledgehammer, and they're not. It's not moving. How, how'd you make out with that ring that you were trying to? So, locally. Yeah, so in pump number three, pump number three uh, is having an issue about two weeks ago. Uh, the guys were able to pull it off, and on the bottom of the uh, impeller, on top of the volute, uh, there are wear rings. There are rings about that diameter. Yeah. Uh, they're actual rings. They're very thin. Uh, one of them blown apart and taken the other one with it. Pretty much like gouging the rotor in your car brakes. Uh, we reached out. I reached out to the vendor. Each ring was thirty-two hundred dollars. So, and I was telling Barry earlier. In the last year or so, we've gotten very, very close with uh, one of our employees' fathers. He's a machinist. We're like, okay, we found a used one. Took it to him. Tried to mic it. Uh, built us two rings for $400 a piece. We put them in the other day. Unfortunately, they were a little too thick. Oh. Uh, not a wasted gamble by any means. No. I have now overnighted, second day aired, two from the factory. Uh, they should be here tomorrow. We'll take those factory rings back to the machinist. He can get the measurements on it. We'll put the new ones from the factory in. We'll get number three up and running. And then we will have rings made for number one and two at a fraction of the cost. Wow. I was willing to take that gamble. The gamble worked when we epoxied uh, that pipe for a Band-Aid. Uh, I'll gamble 800 bucks over 6200 over 6400 all day long. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's going to work out for us. Okay. Nice move, Art. So if I understand, resolution next week. Patty knows all about this, so she's not missing anything here tonight. Um, Hopefully the board has enough information that the resolution will have little to no questions next week. He goes out to bid for, for proposal. Pros will come back. Then the board has to. It won't go out to bid. To proposal. It's it's an what I call an RFP. RFQ. Yeah. Uh, we'll send it out. Range. Right. We'll just we'll send it out. Uh, yeah. To the engineering firms that uh, we know. Yeah. Uh, we work with. It allow us to uh, sort of spread the wealth to some engineering firms, ones we've worked in the past we feel comfortable with, uh, that we haven't seen in a while, yep. and, uh, and get some quotes from them. Okay. At All that right. point, we'll bring the quotes back to the board. And, uh, Does uh, sure. anybody on the board have any problems with us getting that on the agenda? Not at all. Sweet. Thank you very much, for Art. Great okay. explanation. All right. Thank you, Arthur. Thank you for your time. Um, all right. I'm at... <laughs> Part two, um, you know, I I have my report. Did you bring another report for everybody? I, I have extras in case. Thank you goodness, because I don't know. I got mine. I have mine. Do you have yours? Uh, I got it's one in there somewhere. Okay, good, because uh, um, I thought I had. I'll take one. Thank you. I got it somewhere. Nope, I got that. I'm good.
I'm good too. I didn't run this one from the shredder though. All right. All right. I will uh, do my best to not keep you here for too long. I know we've only got an hour left, so we'll be efficient. What did you say? <laughs> I just want to see if he's paying attention. That's all. We're really to be done in two minutes. Art is still here. Huh? I mean, he can go, right? He's here to listen. Oh, these oh. guys are interested. This is. Huh? Are we on page five? Well, let's just. Yeah, I'm not sure where we left off, but. Um, I have notes through page four. All right, so. We got through finances, we got through what we did. I was just kind of walking through that. And so at the top of page five, we were talking a little bit about the help we need. I think that's, is that where you're picking up, Tom? Yes. Right. And I, when I say I got notes, I figured I'd wait till the end. Some of them are questions. Okay. Um, we'll wait till the end. So, you know, we have talked about NEQ funding in this room with some of the same faces and some new faces for the last, at least for me, the last 15 years that I've been coming to board meetings for NEQ. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a question people ask, why should we support this agency versus another, et cetera, et cetera. It's a question that you have asked since day one. And, you know, the reality is that, you know, there are a lot of businesses to support out there. We, unlike others, are an essential service, I think, in the town, though the state doesn't recognize us as such yet. But we provide a service that without us, people don't go home, right? People get sick and things happen. And you could say, well, raise your rates. And so tonight, because you're a, a data man, Tom, I, I actually took the liberty of, of grabbing something. Every couple of weeks, I get letters from our billing company that I can't share with you because of HIPAA. But I get these letters, and basically what it is is when somebody calls and says, I can't afford my bill, we ask them to go through the indignity of proving it. So we say, you have to send me your tax returns. You have to write us a letter. And the reason is because we bill Medicare and Medicaid, which are federal insurance, we have to treat everybody the same. So people have to sit down and explain to us why they can't pay it. Then I have to, we give it to the billing company, there's a scale. So can you or can't you, can we reduce it to some percentage or do we write it down to zero? And so, you know, when you say, why do we need help? First response agencies aren't always on jobs, right? There are days we take a lot of calls, there are days we take no calls but you always want us to be there ready to take calls. There are fixed costs that don't go away whether we take a call or not. And at the current model, at least in Webster, we're 100% reliant, with the exception of a small amount from the town of Fenfield and Webster, but we're 100% reliant on people paying their bills. The challenge is, unlike the water company or the town or whatever, if you don't pay your bills, there's collection actions that happen. You've shut off water, you've shut off the power, Time Warner goes away, no more internet. You know what, you call me five times, I have to show up five times. And if you never pay me, I have to show up the sixth time and the seventh time. And we've had these cases. And so I just would like, for a moment, I won't take long, I want you to hear some of the things that we get. So this is a person that owes $1,425. We've been there twice. 84 year old, limited income, cannot afford to pay anything. We'll write it down to zero. Here's a person that owes $200. I have limited income and can't afford to pay the medical bills. They have given us uh, very limited information beyond that, but you know, what do you say? Here's someone that owes us uh, almost $2,000. I don't have a, w a 2020 W-2. Our, I know our income is a bit higher, but we have a high deductible insurance, so it didn't cover any of this. We also have hospital bills from this episode that had to be put on payments, so I'd appreciate any discount available. Based on the income they gave and the uh, the federal wages, we will take the 2000 and write it to zero. Here's another one, $175 and $180. Um, my husband has been out of work since March 2020. We have no unemployment. I have only SSI of X dollars a month coming in. Husband, when the husband goes back to work, uh, he does only 24 hours a week as a, an hourly employee somewhere. Um, we owe $37,000 in medical bills for four months in rehab. We have no medical insurance to pay for everything. We will take that uh, $400, write it to zero. Um, we have another one. I'm currently unemployed and in financial burden. My partner called the ambulance because I was in pain and I needed it. Um, blah, 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 $1,000. And here's another, you know, last one. I have no medical insurance and approximately $10,000 annual income. 
Um, my income is below the level of the file of tax return, so I've given you the best proof of income I have. So in those few letters, there's $6,000 to write right off. That is more than 10% of what the town currently gives us. That's six letters right there. That's, I get these every two weeks. Last year, almost $150,000 we wrote off. We're not a charity. We can't afford it, right? We can't. We live literally hand to mouth. Um, and I joke, but it's not a joke. Every other Sunday, I wonder, can I make payroll, right? Can I pay the fuel bills? I've got an ambulance, 1739, that's been broken for seven weeks. It's in parts. I can't get it back together. So my six is down to five. We get a snowstorm. We have two accidents. My fleet doesn't run, right? Yesterday, we put four ambulances on the road because we had crews stay over and we grabbed calls, paramedics jumped on ambulances, four ambulances ran on the road to cover. Today, we were the only ambulance up between Penfield, Webster, Arondequoit, Brighton, Gates, and Rochester. We were the only ambulance up. <laughs> it's because two people came in to hop on a rate. What are we doing when we're out of ambulances, right? Wow. But, but we can't do this forever. And so the question of why do you support an agency like this, the answer is because you can't afford not to. We can't do this forever. Right? We're running out of things. If we had not had payroll protection in 2020, we wouldn't be here right now. I can tell you that without a, a doubt. We would, if the federal government hadn't stepped up and helped us, because as we told you, in April and, and March, our calls went to zero days. The fixed cost didn't change. We kept our staffing up. The rent had to get paid. The town wanted their gas money for the ambulances. Right? The insurance had to get paid. But we had no income. It's not we didn't have income in March. Guess what? June, July, we didn't get income. And then we get these things. And what do you do? Do you say, sorry, we're not going to come to your house? This is every day, right? And it's, I wanted you to see these because I know I don't share this data with you, but some of these things are heartbreaking. And what do we do when we go to the door? We have to take care of the patients, right? So the alternative could be, well, we're not going to have any q and here anymore. It's always a choice, right? Life is all about choices. We fix a pump, we don't fix a pump. You're going to wait for someone coming from Bridge and Lake. You're going to wait for someone coming out of Brighton. You're going to wait for whatever. The one thing I will take pride in as long as I walk in this town is that we have cut response time down by minutes and minutes matter when people are in pain, when people are having difficulty breathing, when they need to get treatment. And so that is why we need to find a different solution, right? And this is why, Supervisor, when you and Councilman Cahill and I met the other day, you got it so right. You understand the model and you understand the risk to us, right? We are in a situation where the state gives us no money. The CARES Act, CARES Act funding? Right. Police departments got it. Fire departments got it. They reduced their calls in COVID. School districts, they got it, right? Towns got it. Thank goodness for the town, right? Half a million dollars. EMS, zero dollars in the state of New York. Not a penny because we're all private entities. Ahmed, what's everybody else doing? All right, so, Mr. Dean, I don't have, oh yeah, I left it in my car. Henrietta, almost a million dollars for their ambulance. Uh, Brighton, I think it was $400,000, they buy them a new ambulance every other year. They buy it and turn it over. When you say Henrietta, a million dollars, what, what's that mean? So they, they create a special use district. So, so we understand, we are not an entity in the state of New York in the eyes of the state. We cannot create a district. So people say create an ambulance district. You cannot, right? It doesn't, we're not like a fire district. Those are things that are legally defined in statute. So what we do, and we have this in Penfield uh, for NEQ, is you create a special use district, like your lighting districts, your sidewalk districts, your sewer districts, and they give some percentage of the tax base. So I think in some cases it's 20 cents, some cases it's 30 cents, but they basically allocate as a line item, and the, com the town board becomes the ambulance commission, right, and helps us set the rate. They collect the fees, and then we get it. So it's like a fire district, but in this case the town becomes the, the district. What does the town of Penfield do? So the town of Penfield gives us... I, I can't remember the rate per thousand because we cover the northern part of the town of Penfield, the northwestern part. We get 25,000. I can't remember what the rate is. But it was, it's in the pennies per thousand. Um, and that's, the only, that's all they give. Are all the other um, agencies in the same boat as you? Well, except, well it's, it's very except funny. Except for the ones that are being... Yeah, it's, it's binary. It's very, yeah. it's very interesting. You have some that are getting literally... Mm -hmm. A million, eight hundred eighty thousand, four hundred and some, I mean, significant dollars. From, from the taxpayers. From, from the community, right. right. And then you have others in Arondequite, which literally get zero. And same problem. You know, the town of Arondequite, Tom is having the same meeting with their town saying, we can't do this anymore, right? We have a huge area, and their model is different. So the revenue stream, which I'm going to we'll walk through very quickly, the revenue models are you, you bill a patient, you get the fee for that, you get some mileage, right? You get some government 
uh, insurances. So Rondequake doesn't have a lot of mileage. They're very close to their hospitals, right? They have a high percentage of people 65 and over, mm -hmm. a ridiculously high percentage. Mm -hmm. So their situation, in a way, is even more dire. What I think makes their models a little different, and Penfield is a great example, they still rely heavily on volunteer EMTs. That doesn't exist in Webster. Doesn't exist in Rondequin anymore, right? And so the staffing, that's our biggest expense is labor, right, as you can imagine. And so without having the labor subsidized through volunteers, you know, it's, it, it puts you upside down very quickly. What are the companies that like work for the city, the ones that used to be competitors, used to come in their AMA? AMR, yep, what, AMR. What, do they, what, what do they do? They hemorrhage, they're bleeding. I mean, AMR, if you remember, when we did the CON, they owed the t city a million dollars, remember? They owed the city. They owed it because they weren't getting the response times. And they finally said, we're not going to run the... They literally, I think, and I can't speak in, in complete uh, confidence, but my understanding is they basically said, either you take these penalties away, or we're, why should we pay you to provide a service? You should give us something. So they, they worked that out of the contract. But they're having the same problem. AMR nationally has walked out of town. It's California, uh, in the Midwest, they just said, we can't afford to be here. And they just they walk away. Right? But they're a for-profit business, right? I can't walk away from here. What do I do? Right? What will we do here? And, uh, you know, who's going to cover us? I mean, we have, if, if we were, you know, a few hundred calls a year, you'd say, well, Penfield will pick it up. Rhonda Quinn will pick it up. We were 6,000 calls last year. We're one of the biggest in the county now. No one's going to pick us up, right? Not without a lot of pain. And why should they, right? We give $13.5 million in this community to fire and police. We're just asking for, and we're not asking for $13 million, right? But if you, I did the math, and I wish... Uh, I wish I'd been a little bit more, uh, my memory was better, but if, if we did 20 cents per thousand, which is a fraction of what the fire departments in the other districts around here get, 20 cents per thousand, that puts almost half a million dollars into our budget. That half a million dollars changes our tra trajectory tremendously. It's not a big burden to, I mean, in my house, I know I'm in Penfield, but in my house, I paid almost $300 in fire tax last year. Yeah, what's, the fire what, department in 21 what, years. what's Web's, West Webster's tax rate right now? Isn't it like uh, two I think it's something? A, or three? I think it's just under. I think it's a dollar eighty. Dollar eighty like per thousand. And, and this side, I think, is not far, right. far away. Right. So we're asking for twenty cents, right? Not a huge amount of money. No. But what it does, so we're not asking to cover our whole budget. <laughs> we're asking us for breathing room, right? If it's four or five hundred thousand, it's basically what we got in payroll protection last year. That kept us whole, <laughs> right? If we get another pandemic, all of our costs have gone up. We we we're trying to keep our, um, good employees. You know how that is. That comes with money, right? You can't be the lowest paying employer and get the quality employees. Right. We have employees. Yesterday, I was on my way to a dinner, and uh, I got a call from one of the people at 6.30. Hey, Ahmed, can we order pizza? I'm like, what's going on? He says, you'll be so proud of us. We got slammed in the evening. We covered every call. People came in and grabbed an ambulance. That is the pride you get in the town of Webster, and we are one of the lowest paying ambulance services out there. Wow. But our people are here because they care. Right? They do a hell of a job, and we'd like to get them up to a standard where they're not all working 80 hours a week. Right? EMS is the only first response industry, if you think about it, where retirement doesn't exist. Right? You got cops, we have police officers in our town, 50 years old, they're retired, they're gonna get pension, they're gonna get benefits, they're gone. School teachers, firefighters, right? Some of my peers, same age, they're playing golf all day long, right? That doesn't happen in EMS because we can't afford to pay them what they deserve for this life saving service they provide. Right? A little bit of money from the town, we can't make up the gap, but we can certainly change the trajectory a little bit. Right? And in the end, we, we, need, we cannot take another year like we did last year. We have no savings, right? We finished 2019 with $14,000 in the bank. I showed Paul our books, you know, and people ask me, how do you survive? I said, it's a, it's a balancing game every day, right? We should be able to save. We should be able to upgrade our equipment. You know, we paid $67,000 to put the uh, electric stretchers in. Do you remember seeing them at uh, the breast cancer awareness thing last year, right? We brought one in. But now there are things that you can push that in and we'll auto load it in the ambulance. You're saving back injuries. You're saving drop patients, right? Our fleet is aged, right? We're using all third-hand ambulances. It'd be nice, you know, on a cycle, right? Kind of like Art is talking about maintenance. It'd be nice on a cycle to get ambulances at some frequency. We can't do any of that today. Today we just do our best with duct tape and bubble gum to keep the fleet going. And we've done a pretty good job, but we need help. We need help. And so... That concludes my State of the Union update. And I appreciate you giving me a little time. Are there any questions about that? Yes. Yes, <laughs> all yours. But I, uh, Barry, you've asked a lot. Barry, I don't want to jump ahead of Bill or I'm all set. John. Or, um, I'm going to go backwards, starting with tonight's, the fresh. 
the six letters that you read, and I appreciate you didn't give names and whatever because of HIPAA, before you put them away, are all six in West Webster? East side and West side. I pulled two and two. Okay. They're half. So thank right. you. That was a good question. Um, on page one that you went over last uh, uh, two weeks ago with us or whatever it was, um, when I look at the call data, uh, and I'm going to just go to 2020, Nequals has 3,051 calls and WEMS has 3,048 calls. All right. Um, we have two questions. Uh, one, every call I thought had a WEMS component to it because that's the basic uh, ambulance driving out there. On that side of town. Okay. And that might answer it because these WEMS calls don't include the West Webster basics, right? Exactly. Okay, so does everybody know what I just asked and what he meant by answering it doesn't include the West Webster? No. Okay. Can I take I a shot at this? I think yes. I do, but I'd like to hear it explained. West again. Webster Fire District essentially runs an ambulance service. Right. Northeast does not. Okay. But West Webster Fire Service has decided to outsource their ambulance service to Ahmed's company. Okay. So, for contract details I won't get into at this meeting, for every call that comes into West Webster Fire Department for ambulance, which I take it that they're first on the rate card there? For that side, yep. Okay. All right. Every single one of those calls, for the most part, is handled by his staff. Mm -hmm. Now, when the 911 operator vets the call, they may say, ooh, that needs a little bit more sophisticated service, so that's probably these 3,051 NEQAL calls. Well, a portion of it, yeah. Right? Well, because some go Not all 3,051, but right. some of those, all right? Yep. Did that make sense, Barry? Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. I, I don't have my, my Nequals and West Webster thing, but I think last year in West Webster you got basic calls of like 1,600. 17 and change, yep. Okay. Yep. Good so really, WEMS, basic ambulance service, had about 30, I'm sorry, 4,700 calls last year. Okay, the 1,700 from West Webster is on top. And 3,051 <laughs> of those calls were assessed by the 911 operator to need one of his fly cars from Nequals. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. The reason why I asked the first question before about tonight of where were those write-offs in West Webster is I think Ahmed would agree that he has been consistent with Councilman Cahill and me that West Webster is where he's getting crushed on these write-offs. Yeah. All right. Um. <laughs> What's the reason for that? Because <clears throat> West Webster Ambulance cannot bill the patient. They're a, they're a fire district ambulance, so by law they cannot bill. So what happens is we have to bill the patient directly. And so okay. when you do that, you get these letters. If it's a Medicaid patient, we can't bill them legally at all because they, Medicaid doesn't recognize ALS intercept. So overdoses, diabetics, certain other calls that we pick up, they, that's just charity work, disappears. Not even a bill generated to write off. And then um, Medicare and people with high deductibles and other things, they get the full NEQ bill, and then we get these letters. Okay. So. Um, I think John Cahill and Ahmed are scheduled to go before the West Webster board next uh, Fire commission. Yep. commission next, next Wednesday night. Yeah. Um, I, that's, I guess, the first discussion. It's not, we were hoping that we would have a one-on-one -on -one with them, but they have asked it to be more in their, almost like a board meeting type yep. of thing to the public. public. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and John and, and Ahmed are going to that. Um, but I hope what spawns off of that is that, I, and I, I don't know how else to say it, at least from the research I've done and sitting down with Ahmed, and he's been very transparent and giving every question I've asked, he's given answers to. 
And the only thing I can say, and I appreciate he came in and he's, he's, he gave a lot of great stats tonight, and he, you know, the town's got to help, the town's got to help, the town's got to help. He may be very right, but in my opinion, Wes Webster has to help too. And I want to see how that goes. Okay. So if people are, yep. firefighters and Wes Webster are watching this and they're like, what does that mean? I don't know what that means. You'll talk with Ahmed and... John, so you have two rigs next Wednesday. In West Webster? We have two people, so we staff their ambulance. Right, we staff. So they have their own ambulances, yep. and you staff them. Right. Okay. Right. We staff their ambulance. Yep. Yep. I'm not going to get into any more details. I did yeah. uh, on page two. I want to ask just just so I understand when you've got this percentage of calls, NEQ, the first three categories: uh, Town of Webster, Village of Webster, Webster. This 77 uh, percent of your Nequal fly car are in Webster, and then the other 23% are in other places. Right. But right. when you look at WEMS call by scene grid, you got uh, the Webster ones are 94% in those, uh, when you add up those first three. Right. Is this, once again, because of the West Webster factor? Yes, exactly. So if you added in those 1,700 calls uh, on, on that are, I, I'm gonna call them WEMS calls. Well, or just ambulance calls in general. Ambulance so calls, Ambulance yeah. calls in the town of Webster. Right. Total 4,700. Right. Okay. Um, okay, I didn't have, I, I got that as a note. What the, um, uh, oh, you're, you're, the CARES thing and, and I have a question here. With, with, with us having this, the, the CON, Paul, do you think the town can submit for CARES reimbursement for WEMS? Uh, for NEQUAL? I don't think so. Okay. We tried because you've yeah, contracted. I had a discussion with uh, Matt Turp and George. We asked. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, those are the only questions I have. I Look, I... You have, I'm, you've convinced me over the last year that there's something wrong with the system. I mean, you, and you've elaborated on it, you know, pensions, police, firehouses, taxing authorities, all that stuff. And you guys are like the ugly redheaded stepchild. And it is weird. And I don't quite understand, maybe it's because years ago, volunteers in the fire departments did all the ambulance calls. That in the funeral homes. Huh? The f ambulance transport started with the funeral homes. Okay. Literally, because they were the ones with vehicles big enough. All right. Yeah. <laughs> well, something changed over the years. Obviously, Northeast got out of the ambulance business. Uh, Northeast here in Webster. Union Hill. Union Northeast Hill. Joint Fire District. Northeast. They were, they were never in it. They were never in it. They were never in it. Okay. Right. Fire All departments right. had a choice. Do you provide the service or not? So that the law reads that the the town gets to decide who provides it. In the absence of the town, the fire districts have the option to provide it. And so some fire districts did it, like West Webster, because they had people that were interested in, and they could do it. Webster Fire, before they became, never did. They were never interested. Union Hill picked it up on that side. Ontario picked it up on the other side in Penfield. Okay. They just never did. So it was a choice. I'm intrigued. You might not know that. Arondequite, you use them as an example. Of, yep. They got five fire districts, right? Five fire districts. Yeah. How many of them do ambulance? Uh, St. Paul did. They've given it up, I think. I think, uh, is it Barnard in the north? I think they do ALS first well, response. Yeah, there's, Saint, there's Point Pleasant. There's Point, uh, uh, Seabreeze still Seabreeze, has an ambulance. Ridge Culver. Rarely goes. Laurelton. Yeah, so Laurelton doesn't have one. Seabreeze still has an ambulance. Or Seabreeze or Point, one of those two I always forget. Uh, one of them is it's tiny. Th is right. right, it's like a f two acre or two miles. So I think it's Seabreeze has one. They Ronda Quint covers a lot of their calls. Yeah. Um, and St. Paul gave theirs up. And then I think it's Barnard. They do fire department first response, but no transport. So it's really Monroe and Ronda Quint covering Ronda Quint. Who's coming out of Laurelton? Laurelton does, <coughs> Ronda Quint covers. Laurelton. Sorry? Ronda Quint ambulance covers Laurelton. Right. Yeah. But there's a, there's a substation right there on Party Road. Or Des, not Party. Densmore? Hollandale or? I know what you're talking about. That's Empire and Hellendale's Laurelton's fire station. This Laurelton, yeah. Hellendale, I'm sorry. Is it yeah. Laurelton? That's their main fire station. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
like I said, I, I let's keep in contact throughout this year. It's February. There is something wrong, uh, and I think we're, it's above my pay grade to figure out how it should nationally get fixed and if they don't, you know, the <coughs> hospital systems and whatever. But I also, I, I've tried to be very candid with you that I, 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 I also don't know if the town of Webster budget should do the whole subsidization, especially with all the details I know about what you got going on in West Webster. Um, so I, I hope that as the year goes on, you get through your first meeting over there um, next Wednesday, and if we can then sit down with some people uh, that are in leadership at West Webster Fire Department and uh, see if we can figure this out for the citizens. Okay. Um, I, I really hope we can. Um, I'm sure we'll find a way. Yeah, Matt? I mean, we'll I don't know what else to say, actually. <laughs> well, at so the end of the day, you, you're our ambulance. I'm sorry? At the end of the day, you, you're, you're servicing Webster, and, and we need to support you. Yep. The alternatives, we go away. I mean, and that's, we, that's, we, not, that's <laughs> not a reasonable order, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, thank you. thing to do. Um, I know that you guys want to get going. The last few pages in the packet. Oh, sorry, did you have more questions before I? No. Nope. Okay. You had asked me in November to commit to you on camera that I would try and help explain ambulance billing. <laughs> I said in the first quarter, I didn't say you commit to me, that we get together and figure out a way to explain so, to the citizens. It is, it is not easy, I have to tell you. And so I, I, I would just ask, and maybe we'll have another opportunity to do this or we can do it offline, but I tried to give you a few slides with the help of some of my other EMS leadership that. colleagues yeah. Of, yeah. of how to do it. I gave you some examples of a, a lift assist, a chest pain call, a cardiac arrest call, shortness of breath, overdose. And I want you to see, they're almost all negative calls, right? We lose on all of these because yeah. the supplies don't get reimbursed at the right rate or people don't pay. So let's look through it. It will be a start, I think, for what you were looking for, and we can refine it sure. when you're ready. Sure. But if the community is interested and we want to do like a, an open forum and people to talk about the ambulance and the billing, I've always been willing to do it. We've ha tried to do a few. No one ever comes. So, it, 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 and you know what's kind of, and I, I, maybe this is overly simplified, okay? Back in the day when the fire department did uh, ambulance, it was either all volunteer or if the fire department was a taxing district, to sit there and say that, hey, I never had to pay for an ambulance. No, you did. Right. You paid right. for it in your fire district taxes, right? <clears throat> yep. Now all of a sudden they're out of it, this and that, and all of a sudden, okay, so we'll just move this over to the town, basically, paying for the ambulance. I find that an interesting move. And that's probably oversimplified. But nothing comes for free. It's just the manner in which you're paying for it. Right. And so I'm also, as we go down through this year with West Webster and all that, you know, I don't know. I mean, we've talked about some thinking outside the box, uh, you know, um, I don't know. I won't get well, into that. I think, I think the services are a lot more extensive and sophisticated now, too, than they were ten, even 10 years ago. Yeah, right? I mean, the days of scoop and run yeah. is, is over. I mean, we are right. now providing emergency room level You're care. The costs right are, now, I mean, yeah. a monitor that we're trying to replace a few of, they're almost $45,000. We have six of them. For a cardiac monitor, right? Are you right? still doing the electronic town yeah. meetings? Oh, we're st actually, come on. You're my straight guy. We're doing it with the... Uh, we're, well, we're, we're, I'm we're starting on. Um, uh, that would be a great place. To February start. 24th. There would be a, yes, yeah. right. There would be a place for for Ahmed or whoever he wants to yes. have do it to to make a presentation. Well, we're trying to do be, COVID be on, friendly on at first, and it's just yeah. Barry people and I. Watch it at their convenience, and not five people on the dais, but they'll evolve. I, I Charlie, this might be a legal question, and I'm I'm not trying. If people are watching, I'm not trying to tick off fire districts. All right. How is it? that a fire district can be out there with the boot at intersections, and I'm a sucker. I always put the $20 in there. But those are probably not volunteer fire districts. They're just getting additional funding. No, raising. you're not giving it to the district, so you got to be very careful. So the fire district, it owns... Sorry, Charlie, do you mind? No, okay. I, no I don't know the answer. I know the <laughs> okay. answer. So I know the answer. You're lying okay. the same thing. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. No, but the fire district owns the apparatus, owns the building, owns the equipment. The Firemen's Association is a volunteer nonprofit association that provides free staffing 
to a volunteer fire company. So what you're putting your dollar in the boot for is a volunteer firemen's association. And what they do with that money is they will do, uh, you know, if there's a, a, fire, a long, prolonged fire and the women's auxiliary comes, they'll give food. The food has to get paid for, right? No one in this town donates that. Food gets paid for. If, uh, you know, firemen want to get a nice winter jacket, they'll sometimes help subsidize that. Mm -hmm. um, we have an association building that we built behind West Webster Station 1. The Webster Fire Department has a building in the, in the middle of the village. You pay for that. Um, you use it for firemen's functions and things like that. So that money goes to the association, which is a staff that the district uses for free. Okay. Right? So you're staffing... your. Well, you have, I was going to say, why can't you with your ambulance hold a bedpan? Yeah. The, we uh, thought about you know. that. <laughs> That's the bedpan. But, but, but I didn't want to take Art's you know. business. <laughs> I mean, it was still from Art. Um, bedpan. Really. Okay. By the way, is Chris Bilo out there? No. Very interesting. I'm, I'm, okay, because, um, well, um, if, if he is not out there, we're over. Then we, my friends, have completed this workshop. Thank you for everybody who attended and watched at home.